What's going guys? So here's the thing. There are these questions on the SAT where no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, you just can't solve them. You just don't even know where to start. And sometimes you ask yourself, like, is this question even supposed to be on the SAT? Is this the SAT or did I accidentally sign up for MCAT? The technique that I'm about to show you in this video will actually help you solve these hard questions by allowing you to see what you couldn't see before. You see, the reason you can't even start on the question is because you're not seeing what you're supposed to see. Like the little connections, you're not seeing them. So you don't even know where to start. But with this technique called visualization, you'll be able to see what you couldn't see before. And all the visualization is drawing out the information that the question gives you or whatever you're thinking about in your head. Instead of just thinking in your head, you're just going to draw it out on paper. And at this point, you're probably thinking, come on, John, I thought you're going to teach me some crazy tricks that people use to get the perfect score. Like, come on, man, visualization, drawing, are we in an art class? Raising your SAT score is not complicated. You just got to do the right things and not do the wrong things. And I'm going to teach you what you got to do to do the right things. If you keep doing the wrong things, you're going to get the wrong answers and you're not going to get the score you want and you're going to go to the wrong college that's not right for you. So in this video, we're going to use some parabola examples. But don't worry, this visualization technique can be applied to any questions on the SAT and it will help you solve these hard, hard questions. And if you're new here, Welcome to Admission Hackers is where we talk about how you can study for the SAT math the right way so you can get the target score you want and go to the college of your dreams. And my name is John. I'm the SAT tutor who's about to teach you some cool stuff. And I got a perfect score on the math section back in high school. And I've been working with other high school students so that they can score 700 plus on the math section. So if you're trying to hit that target score on your next SAT, then go hit that like button and let me show you how it works. So when it comes to parabola questions, you want to be mindful of something known as visualization. And what is that? Well, visualization just means literally visualizing what you're thinking about. So instead of just doing it in your head, write out or draw out on paper exactly what you read in the question or what you're thinking about in your head, right? So after you read a question, you might be thinking, okay, I should probably do this, do this, do this, and do that, right? So instead of thinking about it or thinking about what you should do, so for instance, let's say you're dealing with a parabola that has a vertex of 4, 3 and is facing downward, right? So rather than thinking about this vertex in your head, write it on paper, draw it out. So on your paper, draw a parabola that has a vertex at 4, 3 and is facing downward. That's all the visualization is. It's really simple. Instead of doing it in your head, draw it out on your paper. And how would that help you? Well, the benefit is that as soon as you start writing information down on paper, it's going to be even more well organized. Everything you think about, everything you read about on the question and everything you need will be on that one spot. And when everything's in one spot, then it will help you see what you couldn't see before. There have been so many instances where students were stuck on a question for the longest time, but the moment they draw out what they read, what they were thinking about on paper, they can solve it right away because they could see what they couldn't see before. It's the weirdest thing, but it actually works. And if it works, you want to start using it. So let's start with this one. The question says in the XY plane, the graph of the function f of x is equal to this has two x intercepts, right? What's the distance between the x intercepts? So some people might see what to do right away, but most people, they might see not see it. So you kind of see all this information. You see x intercepts, you see a quadratic function, like you, you're kind of aware of what's going on right now, but you don't really know where to start, right? If that's the case, try visualizing. See, instead of thinking about it and then try to rereading it over and over again, try to draw out what the question tells you, right? Because the question tells us that it's a parabola, right? X squared, that's going to be a parabola, and it has two X intercepts, right? So just sketch it out roughly. So it's a parabola and it has two X intercepts. And the question is asking us to find out what the distance between the x-intercepts are, right? So x-intercepts are right here. And what we have to find out is going to be the distance between these two points. Now that you have visualized exactly what the question says, you can kind of see what you need to do. See, what we're trying to find out is the distance between two x-intercepts. And for us to find out the distance, you just need to know where this x-intercept is located and where this one's located. That way you can find out what the distance is between the two. And that's exactly how visualization helps you get the answer. You read the question and you're like, huh, I kind of recognize these things, but not really sure what to do. Draw it out. If you draw it out, it's going to be more organized and you're going to see exactly what you need to do. Let's go to the next example. The question says there's this equation right here and in the quadratic equation above, it's a quadratic. A is a non-zero constant, okay? 
the graph of the equation in the xy plane is a parabola with vertex c and d okay which of the following is equal to d right so this one is a lot tougher than the previous one there are so many letters and weird words like non-zero constant a and c and d is the vertex what the heck is this but again if you are confused rather than rereading the question just visualize just draw out what the question says right the question tells us that it is a parabola right so it's going to be a just a parabola okay and it has a vertex at c d right and the question is asking us to find out what the value of d is right so based on what we drew right here okay d represents the y coordinate right d is the y coordinate of the vertex so essentially the question is asking us to find out what the y coordinate of the vertex is so do you see how that kind of clear things up? If you visualize, it organizes the information into one single spot and it allows you to see what you can see before. And some of you guys might still be stuck on like, okay, I see that I have to find out the Y coordinate, but how am I supposed to find it? Well, let's kind of think about that. See, D is the Y coordinate. How do we find the Y coordinate of the vertex? We just find out what the C or X coordinate of the vertex is. We find the X coordinate and then we just plug it into the function and you get the y coordinate out of it, right? So if you know what the x coordinate is, then you can plug it in and you can find out what the y coordinate of the vertex is, which is what the question is asking us to find, right? And see, by having all this information in one spot, you can now see exactly where you need to go next. Our goal is to find out what the x coordinate is. And how do we find the x coordinate? Well, let's visualize this portion right there. From this, we know that our x-intercept is going to be where? It's going to be 2 and minus 4, right? So what is 2 and minus 4? It's the x-intercepts, right? X-intercepts are located right there. And their coordinates are going to be minus 4, 0, and 2, 0. And based on the looks of it, it seems like the vertex, the vertex is located right in the middle of two x-intercepts, right? And that's actually true. Vertex is located in the middle of two x-intercepts. Again, that's something you would have not been able to see unless you had drawn out and visualized what the question was telling you. And that's exactly how you visualize and help yourself get the answer. Rather than just reading the question over and over and over again and hoping it will click, no, just draw everything out on paper like we did here and you will start to see stuff that you couldn't see before. So if you guys want to try out these parabola questions, they are going to be linked down below. There's going to be a PDF file that has these two questions and two more parabola practice questions, which you can use visualization to help yourself get the answer. And furthermore, there's going to be a written explanation, not just the answer key, but also explanation on why that is the answer. That way you can understand how to answer these questions. So is visualization something you've been doing this whole time or you have never seen this before? Like, is it helpful? Does it help you get the answer? Or do you think it's just not really helpful? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you guys found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys on the next video with more helpful tips and tricks to help you score higher on the SAT. Good luck.